What's up, everybody? Okay, when well, today we're a little a bell math minute looking at uh, graphing and calculations, which I definitely regret doing on my iPad, but that's okay. Um, we want to construct a bar graph with the data given in table one. So here we can see table one, we have two different dependent variables. Um, and then you can see with each of our data points, we have a plus or a minus that signifies an error bar. So my first step is always that I calculate what the upper and lower bounds are going to be for those error bars, just so I have them when I'm graphing. Um, so here I've calculated, I've added, I've subtracted to all that. Um, now when we get to our graph, we're going to put our dependent variable on the y-axis. I have two different dependent variables. So I'm just going to write rate and then put my units of nanomoles per minute per milligrams of my mitochondrial protein. And then my independent variable on the x-axis of temperature with the unit of degrees Celsius. You're going to scale your y-axis. You do not have to label every single point. Um, you'll notice that as I'm graphing, I'm filling in just so that I can easily like do the graphing. Um, since I was on my iPad, it wasn't as easy to count things out that I wanted to count. Um, so for example, when we graph this, we're going to look at the first value. So let's say our rate of oxygen consumption at 20 degrees Celsius, I see that that's 12.8. So I'm going to put the top of my bar at 12.8. And then I have the error bar going from 15 to 10.6 because that shows the plus or minus of 2.2. Um, now, I labeled each of these error bars just because it was easier to see, um, but you don't have to do this. Uh, but what you do need to do is signify to us um, in making a key which one of these was the oxygen consumption and which of these was the ATP synthesis, um, since you have two bars at each of these data points. Um, so this is what it should look like and make sure that you don't cover up your error bars when you're graphing. Um, so now let's do our calculation. I want to calculate the average amount of oxygen consumed at 10, degree, uh, 10 milligrams um, after 10 minutes. So we look at our data table, we see that at 25 degrees Celsius, at 16.5. So we do 16.5 times 10, and then we multiply by 10 again, because it's 10 milligrams in 10 minutes. That gives us one 1,650 nanomoles. Um, and so I hope that this was helpful. Remember, 8 by 10 was just assessed by y'all.